thank you, Gordon and Laura, for joining us uh, here at Scotch Mountain, the site of the 8th Annual Electric Eclectics uh, Festival of Exper Experimental Music and Sound Art, uh, which runs August 2nd to 4th this year. That's it. Right. Um, I was looking at the website, and I've been to the festival before, um, but I'm a little curious uh, if you could take us back to uh, the, before the festival started, and uh, why, why an experimental music sound art festival here on Scotch Mountain, just outside of uh, Meaford, Ontario? That's a very good question. <laughs> why? why? My mother asked that, too, when she was around. Um, well, many elements fell together. Uh, we, we had a farm in the area before that, uh, uh, on top of Beaver Valley um, area, and we had lots of great parties there, and in a way it was a festival but it was not organized. Performances would happen, music, teaching, all this stuff. And then my when my parents they got they bought this farm and we inherited it later. But uh, um, it a, a many ingredients came together to make us want to do something here, including Gordon's brother, right? That's right. Well my brother uh, Mark Monahan started the Ottawa Blues Fest in Ottawa you know, in the early 90s, so he was always encouraging us to do a festival here because he would come and visit and he'd say, you know, I can help you get it organized, and, because there's a little bit of bureaucracy involved in terms of registering as a non-profit organization and then applying for grants and all that stuff. Oh, so, sorry, I just wanted to say, because also want to mention that that was the same time we met uh, some locals, John and Kathy Kerr, and uh, I volunt was forced to volunteer for the puppet making, whatever, a workshop, art workshop for kids, and met Kathy Kerr. Her husband was working at the Meaford Hall, and then they said, why don't you do something at the hall? So that's how it started the first year, right? These that kind of ingredients. Of those things. Yeah. And then also uh, our assistant director, Chris Warden, who lives in Guelph, um, we had already known him for a few years, and he kind of has his expertise for knowing what's going on right now in the younger scene uh, in Canada and internationally. So I think the combination of all of our experiences um, in addition to the fact that Laura and I lived in Berlin for 14 years and we presented a lot of events over there as well. So, and you know, my background is also in experimental music and sound art and, and that. So all of these things together kind of mix perfectly to, you know, encourage us to basically establish it the first year, see what, see what happened, you know? Like, right. I think if it didn't work the first year, we would just <laughs> yeah, and we <laughs> built like a tiny stage. You know? <laughs> it did work. In a milk crate. <laughs> well, I was going to say, uh, you know, experimental music, but initiating this festival here in you know rural Ontario was that a bit of an experiment in terms of venue? Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Well, we true. we realized oh. that we're probably really the only <laughs> presenter in this area doing this kind of thing. Right. I mean, there is the festival of fringe film in. Durham, Ontario. Right. So in that regard, they're doing equally experimental presentations of more media-based yeah. and, and film-based work. But I guess we're really pretty much the only ones doing this sort of fringe-based music here. And I should say that you know, not the entire festival is not only experimental. Um, I would say 25 to 30 percent of it is experimental, bona fide experimental. I mean, there's a whole bunch of it which, which I consider to be just more left of mainstream. Right. Like yeah. certainly not mainstream music at all. Right. But, but somehow crossover between experimental and then more mainstream versions of music. Right. Because right. well. like, if you want to, say, involve locals and you've got a teenage rock band in Meeford, yeah. of course. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. They've got to play, you know, if they can. So, yeah. There's, and it's not a compromise, it's kind of a compliment. So as, as you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, it's not certainly not mainstream popular music, uh, which so some of the performers might be, or maybe all of them might be fairly obscure to people who aren't in, into the uh, new music, experimental music scene. But within that scene, looking at the performers you have coming up this year and past performers are certainly not obscure uh, performers in, in this, this kind of uh, 
uh, world. Um, how, how you've been able to attract uh, performers from all over the world uh, of such high caliber and uh, what's their response to performing here at the ele Electric Eclectics? Surprisingly, they want to be here. <laughs> so we've just surprised us. But really, it's uh, got a... I don't know. I think it's because it's not so overly um, established, maybe. Or maybe it's also a partial vacation, right? You can come up and have a holiday, go swim in the harbor. Right. You know, meet some musicians, eat free. Like, you know, it's... Uh, there's some attractive qualities, I, and I, I, I am surprised. Actually. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, like how we attract them, like sometimes we know them personally, so they kind of come up and, and they're willing to come for, you know, not the highest fee because we don't have a huge budget, but, you know, two of our headliners this year, we don't know personally, but we were able to uh, come up with a fee that was uh, satisfying to their agencies and how right. book them. So and, and they're not experimental. I mean the Gories is a punk band from the eighties in Detroit. I mean one of their notable aspects of that group was that uh, they combined a bit of black R and D influence with punk music and they were kind of first people who were still to do that. Um, and then No Joy is a band from Montreal that's kind of doing what they call shoegaze, post-punk, whatever. <laughs> but I wouldn't really say that that's experimental either. It's it's it's, it's all within that post-punk It's historic. Genre. It's, yeah. it's right. important. Well, no joy isn't, but the glory yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And also and Chris then, Warden does a lot of punk uh, Right. A lot. Yeah. Right. These were Chris's ideas, too, right? Yeah. And then, um, the more experimental side, we have Shelley Hirsch, who's quite well-known internationally. Yeah. You know, she's really, uh, you know, experimental vocalist. And, uh, so, I mean, the way she's coming is because she's a friend of ours, so, I mean, obviously we pay her to come up, but, but she's coming for... <laughs> but she's even driving up with a friend Actually, who does the cooking, the drummer, right. Michael Evans, who does cooking here, yeah. drumming workshops and, and things like that as well. Like, lots of... Um, because, I mean, it's amazing that they're not, uh, some of our friends are not just talented musicians, but also good chefs, or they have all these talents, right? Well, you know, I th sort of thinking about it, too, and being an artist and performer, et cetera, in different venues, and, you know, being in Dawson City, Yukon, where there's that, you know, as opposed to the grind of, say, doing a, you know, a big gig in New York and back to the hotel and right. kind of... Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's social, but you're you're in a larger environment. The the opportunity to sort of come come to a smaller environment uh, where the chef maybe is also the, uh, the sound guy. Or right. <laughs> yeah. That's it's, uh, it's really you know, there's something uh, I think that we all kind of long for. Uh, you know, a smaller, tighter, tight knit world, uh, more accessible. You know, the pe audiences here can engage with the performers fairly easily. And what I like too, you can have that closeness, and then you can also have your space. You yeah. know, that's the beauty of Canada when you have like <laughs> yeah. land, you know, 100 acres, whatever, that people can also still find their quiet spot too. So, looking at the uh, lineup for this year's festival and some of the things you mentioned about crossover and mainstream mixed with experimental, uh, there's some things happening at this year's festival that sort of really draws on that strength as well. And one of them is uh, Nika, an uh, award winning filmmaker who's uh, going to be shooting an experimental docu documentary during the festival. Uh, how did that happen, and uh, how, how do you think that's going to work out? She, uh, she's attended past few years and um, she's a filmmaker by profession so I remember her mentioning it last year at the festival she said you know I'd really like to shoot a documentary about the electric eclectics and I'll see what I can do about finding some funding or whatever and you know, I said sure fine you know and then she contacted us a few months ago and said that she's going to do it and she has this uh, crowdsourcing funding thing going on online, so it looks like she's getting a certain amount of initial backing to get it going. Right. 
And so, uh, yeah, she's just taking the initiative herself to, to do that. So we'll see how it works out. Right. But it's really nice. I like the sample she sent, and I think her aesthetic is really akin and in tune with what's going on here. Right. Because I'm always, uh, I mean, it's happened before in a way where a crew comes in and then everyone freezes <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> you know. But uh, I think they're, because they're a part of it, it makes a difference. Maybe and how it will be um, portrayed. But right. I think there's a lot of things uh, she can gather, like source material from between performances and nature and uh, indoor and outdoor. That's right. And and as you mentioned, uh, if if you want to escape, yeah, you, you can. There's multi venues on site. There's also. Uh, uh, you know, film and, and video uh, installation projects happening. Uh, DJs playing at, in the valley. In the yeah. valley, yeah. Yeah, valley. So of DJs playing at, in the valley. In the yeah. valley, yeah. Yeah, valley so, of the DJs. Right, yeah. 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 How does that, uh, you know, as opposed to just having one main stage site, how how does that sort of uh, allow uh, uh, both the performers and audiences to sort of uh, experience the the whole festival? Well, it's obvious, you know that. It, we have the resources here, we have the space, we have some, um, you know, locations that are great for certain things, so it's just, it makes sense to take advantage of the different spaces that we have, the different containers that we have, different venues on location that we can use for installations or, I mean, in the other case, you know, we, we, we hire a party tent put down in the forest in the valley that becomes the valley of the DJs. <laughs> um, so that's like the after hours party happens down there. But also during the performances, during the day and the evening, yeah, there is a little wander. bit of something going on go. down there. Yeah. Some, some yeah. ambient music. And right. And DJ and whatnot too. So. And attendees can uh, stay on site if they so choose. Well, yeah, Festival camping, goers. Camping included in all the ticket prices. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yeah. I should mention too that there's a two for one local special. So, um, you know, for local people in the area who may not need to camp because maybe they'll go home at night or right. whatever, or just to encourage taxi, more local people to come they can out. Get a taxi cheap. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. to encourage more people to come out, we offer a two for one local special. So if you show up on a festival pass. On a festival pass. So. Uh, show up, bring uh, an extra friend with you, and just have some ID to show that you, you live there locally. Right. Local will include Owen Sound over to Thornbury and Collingwood. You know, we're kind of yeah. flexible with the way we interpret <laughs> that. So, uh, so for uh, people in the area who haven't been to the festival festival before, uh, can you tell us what, what they can expect, what they need to bring? Um, what, what are they going to experience? <laughs> well, you know, bring sunscreen, bring a hat, umbrella, umbrella <laughs> bring, no, no. You know, bring uh, you know, warm clothing for it at night in case it gets cold. No, no, but then you, you can buy that. it at the yard sale, too. The, the yard sale, you <laughs> buy extra clothes and you forget them. Right. There's food concessions, so you don't have to bring your own food. There's good food here to be had for a good price. Bring your own drinks because we are unlicensed, but it's perfectly legal to bring anything you want to drink here. Um, yeah, bring an open mind and, uh, you know. Bring a swimsuit for... Well, yeah, too, I'm thinking with a, a lot of festivals, if you come and, and uh, you're, you're blown away by a performer, you might be able to pick up a CD as well. Obviously, of yeah. Of course. Yeah, performers yeah. bring their own merchandise for sale, so we have that, merch tent. Well, I, I'm certainly uh, really looking forward to this year's festival. I'll be here uh, along with uh, my family and friends, and uh, cool. thanks for the interview. Sure. Thank you very Thank much. You Great. Too. Oh, and bring a costume if you feel like dressing up. <laughs> <laughs>